Okay, we've got a fun one. This is gonna be kind of a one-two punch for us here. So this is uh, kind of following sweet, following sweet? Following suit, following suit, uh, a sweet suit, uh, with a bunch of my contemporaries, Nathan on shuffle, uh, rhyme signatures, and I want to even say Scott from the Prog Corner uh, put out videos with bands with no bad albums, and I want to kind of follow suit because it got me thinking of bands without any bad albums, so... Check all those up there. I've left them all down there as well. There's probably going to be some crossovers. There's going to be some call and response. But, you know, I, I noticed that my list is a little bit different than their list, as they really should be. You know, everybody's taste is a little bit different. And I want to know what your list is as well. So we got five bands here with no bad album. Now, a little bit of um, kind of housekeeping, a little bit of rules here. First off, these are bands that never had any kind of dip in quality. They've always been outstanding. They've always been amazing. I, I wanted to have the cap off at about, you know, an 8 out of 10, at least an 8 out of 10. These are bands not only with bat, with no bad albums, but with only great albums, you know, because you can have a lot of bands on here that have no bad album, but I wanted to have bands that only had great albums. So we're only looking at bands that have only 8 out of 10s or higher. So unfortunately, this rules out some of the classic prog stuff because, you know, a lot of the bands from the 70s dipped pretty heavily in quality in the 80s. You know, we're looking at Yes and Genesis and uh, King Crimson and Jethro Tull. So, you know, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, all of those bands, there's a little bit of the dip, you know, and sadly, there's also no rush. So, yeah, just to kind of like beat people to the punch. But also, you know, some of the big modern bands like Porcupine Tree and Steven Wilson, Dream Theater, Gaspacho, Devin Townsend. You know, I would say that they have great discographies, but not completely great discographies. Even Opeth has heritage. Also... I wanted to limit myself to bands that own, that had more than three records, kind of doing what Ian did from the Rhyme Signatures, because the more albums you put out, I know, the higher the likelihood you have of putting out a dud. Otherwise, we'd be talking about Storm Corrosion and Native Construct or Ephrat that only put out one record. And I'm like, well, that doesn't really stand toe to toe to a band like Yes or the Flower Kings that have you know, 20 odd records, you know? Um, so... That all being said, we're talking about 8 out of 10 records and only those that had put out more than four, so including four. Um, so for that, I wanted to first talk about five honorable mentions because all these bands have three records. Some of it is because they're very new to the scene, they're very young, and so the possibility that this video will be out you know, outdated very, very quickly is very, very real. Uh, as well as, you know, they put out three and then they were kind of done. So kind of going alphabetically, because I don't want to show favoritism to anyone. First off, we got Angelard. You know, their first, you know, their three records are just absolutely stellar. I would still say that their first record is the best. And I think everybody agrees that Hybris is their best. But uh, Epilogue and uh, Villa Villian Ogas... Uh, yeah, their other two records are also at least an 8 out of 10. You get more of the same, but it's, you know, all three of these records, you know, I would say the first one is a 10 out of 10, the second one's about an 8.5 out of 10, and then their third one is about a 9 out of 10. Then we've got Black Country New Road, and they only have three records. Uh, technically, they have two and a live record, but that's still three, all original material. Uh, and we're going to see what the future holds for them, because the lead singer, songwriter, and kind of frontman dipped out. He was just like, okay, peace, yo. But they put out two outstanding, outstanding records. Ants From Up There is still one of my all-time favorite indie rock records. Uh, and their live record that they did post him was really, really good. So I'm really excited to see where they go from here. They might actually elevate themselves up once they release a fourth record uh and black midi put out their three records and they have very recently called it quits and all three of those records are just absolutely stellar you know banger after banger after banger none of their albums is lower than a nine out of ten and i think like all three are just the same amount of quality in that uh, and then from there let's go back in time we've got harmonium french canadian progressive rock 
artists. They got their self-titled one. They got the the five seasons, and then they've got their their kind of very whimsical double disker. And again, the lowest that I can say is an eight point five, and that was their first uh, you know the self-titled one. Uh, the very whimsical last album that they did, I would say, is a nine out of ten. And then the the five seasons, absolutely a ten out of ten. So if you haven't listened to Harmonium. This is your call to do so. And then finally, thank you, scientists. Uh, three albums. All three are stellar. I think the only one that would be like an 8 out of 10 are The Stranger Head Prevails, because I'm not a huge, huge fan of that. But Maps of uh, Non-Existent Places and A Terraformer, uh, those are 10 out of 10 records. If you haven't listened to those ones, again, this is your sign to do so. So, a little bit of honorable mentions, only because, again, they didn't put out more than four, either because they're still too new or... They called it quits before they can really get, you know, a lot of good things going. So with that, we got the cream of the crop left. These are five artists that have put out at least an 8 out of 10 record. And we're going to start off with Moon Safari. Moon Safari, one of my all-time favorite bands. Doorway to Summer, Bloom Yud, uh, Lovers, and Himalay Back in Volume 1 and Volume 2. The only one that I would say dips a little bit is Himalay Back in Volume 1. But even that, I would consider a very strong 8 out of 10 with Mega Moon and, um, what, Candyland? Uh, those two tracks, uh, as well as Too Young to Die. Just stellar. Absolutely stellar. And, like, the whole album itself is so strong, so oomph, um, that I absolutely love it. You know, so when the weakest album of the lot is a very strong 8 out of 10, the rest are magnificent. Doorway to Summer being the debut, I absolutely love. I think it's still one of the best debut records that we've ever seen. Like hitting so hard, so quick, so strong right off the get-go. Bloom Yud being their masterpiece. Absolutely stellar. If you pick up a Moon Safari album, you're not going to go wrong. And the very longly anticipated Himalay Back in Volume 2 absolutely blew the first one out of the water you know it was so freaking good an absolute return to form and i still listen to it now and just mm, get all the good feels about it another one is another contemporary a lot of these are contemporary um this one's a contemporary prog band it shouldn't come to any surprise for any of my viewers and that is haken uh haken's album starting with aquarius going into visions going into the mountain going into uh affinity which for me this is when we start to waver a little bit uh but even with vector virus and um fauna i still love all their albums and i think that like all of the you know the last four records again affinity uh vector virus and fauna they're all 8 out of 10s, you know? Even with Virus being the worst, I would still consider that one, just with the Messiah Complex, an 8 out of 10 experience, you know? I know it's got Carousel and the uh, uh, Messiah Complex, and that alone is enough to elevate it to an 8 out of 10. But I love Vector. Vector is one of my favorites. I think it is their best current iteration of the band that they've done so far and i absolutely adore fauna i know a lot of people don't really like it all that much but i still get so much out of it it might have been because i saw a lot of those songs performed live and i think the only one that i'm like the only track off of that album that i'm not completely here for is love bite but even then i still love it you know so fauna i think is enough to elevate it you know I, there's enough in that record it's the most dense record that they've ever put out and that includes the vector virus uh duo their first three records you can't touch all three of those records are 10 out of 10s Affilion, I'd say, is a 9 out of 10. You know, there's some of the smaller moments on that record that I'm not as much of a fan of. And then I would 100% say that Vector is a 10 out of 10, Virus is an 8 out of 10, and Fauna is about a 9 out of 10. So that's where we're working with within Haken. Okay, we're covering some pretty big bands so far. You know, I've talked a lot about some really big staple bands. I wanted to talk about some bands that maybe don't necessarily get the love that they deserve, even though their entire discography is stellar. I want to talk about a neo-prog group Group, and we're going to talk about Comedy of Errors. These guys are a neo-prog band from the UK. If you haven't heard of them, they got started in the, you know, 2010s and have just like stellar after stellar after stellar records. I heard of them first with Fanfare and Fantasy, their sophomore record. I went back and listened to Disobey, their debut record, and it is fantastic. If you're looking for a modern 
iteration of the neo prog sound look at comedy of errors uh spirit is still probably my favorite record from them uh house of the mind is the only record that i would say is like an eight out of ten that is the kind of the black sheep of the family but time machine and threnody for a dead queen these ones are nine out of tens i would say fanfare and fantasy and spirit are uh, ten out of tens and disobey is probably about a nine out of ten so yeah if you're always struggling with the neo prog sound and you want something that's a little bit more contemporary a little bit more new putting new spins on older sounds check out comedy of errors yeah that's one that i i wish that more people knew about because i feel like comedy like neo prog in the prog sphere doesn't really get a whole lot of love so i i want to i want to champion that because i love neo prog neo prog is one of my favorite expressions of prog music all right, let's talk about a band now that um, is a part of the prog movement, but kind of sidestepping. They're a little bit more popular. They're a little bit more independent. And again, this is another one that it, it, those who love this band and know about this band love them. But uh, I feel as if, I don't know, they don't, they kind of get overlooked. And that is Godspeed, You Black Emperor, kind of moving within the post-rock experimental side of things. And there were a lot of bands to choose within this. I find within this expression, there's a lot of bands that put out amazing and beautiful records, but they always have one or two duds. You know, you've got Sigur Ross, you got Explosions in the Sky, you got Mogwai. I love all of their discographies, but there's always that one or two albums that I'm just like, Ugh, that's a, that's a little bit of a jagged pill. And I feel like Godspeed You Black Emperor has never put out an album that wasn't at least a nine out of 10. You know, and that is very, very hard to do, especially within this expression. They're always putting out, at the very least, a 9 out of 10. And I would say that their debut album, F, hashtag A, hashtag Infinity, and even their last album of uh, God's P at State's End, those are the only ones that I would say are like 9 out of 10. Like, I still love Alleluia, Don't Bend, Descend, because that was the first record of theirs that I heard. Ascender, Sweet, and Other Distressed, I still have a very, very, very soft spot spot in my heart for it. I think it's just so punchy it's so immediate it's so oomph. it's where you have lift your skinny fists like a tennis to heaven yankee uxo and luciferian towers these three records are 10 out of 10s these are full-on masterpieces and i can't not give it to this band especially because all those albums that are around it are just so brilliant as well Again, they never dip below a 9 out of 10. This brings us to our last one, and I was kind of hemming and hawing and trying to figure out who would take the last piece, because there's a lot of bands that I haven't already covered. But I gotta give it to my man. I gotta give it to the master. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have me as a music aficionado here on YouTube. If it wasn't for this guy, this is the one that started it all for me. This was my first love of music. This was my first love of, like... I love music, but I became a fan of his work. You know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't love bands the way that I do. And that is the master. If you haven't figured it out by now, it's very, very clear who I'm talking about. It's Weird Al Yankovic. Weird Al has not put out a bad record. Like, here's the thing. My man has put out 14 albums 14 with a lot of legacy bands with a lot of bands that go past say eight nine ten or even you know we almost are touching well i would actually include 15 i would include the uh weird his biopic soundtrack as an album because there's a couple of new tracks on there as well uh as well as if you include his ep of uh medium rarities which you know hold all of his uh, singles that he never put out on records he's never put out a bad one He's never put out a bad one. A part of it is he's always taking the cream of the crop of whatever's being popular at the time. So he is a little bit of a slave of whatever's popular, but he's always able to do something very interesting with it. You know, I would say that the only record from his that dips into the eight out of 10 is Polka Party from 1986, only because Living with a Hernia, Addicted to Spuds and Toothless People, they're not great parodies but i would attribute that more to the source material you know addicted to love ruthless people and living in america not great tracks but within polka party you still have those bangers dog eat dog one of these days and christmas at ground zero his first foray into christmas music absolute bangers dog eat dog is still one of my favorites you know he covers the talking heads so beautifully that 
It could have been one of the best Talking Heads songs ever. So, yeah, to not give it to Weird Al, where even his worst is still leagues ahead of some of the albums that were coming out at the time. Ugh. He never fails. He never misses. So that's why I've got to give it to Weird Al. He's one of the most consistent artists within music and an absolute banger. So yeah, there you go. Those are my five. Which ones do you think I missed? Which ones do you think uh, deserve to have their names on here? If you want to follow my rules, have at her. Go for it. If you want to make your own rules and just have a band that doesn't have a bad record. Those are my five. I want to hear about yours by commenting down below. I want to send a huge shout out once again to Nathan on Shuffle, Ian from Rhyme Signatures, and Scott from the Prog Corner for giving these ideas, you know, the, the group of us here, we have this, this idea of it's share and share alike. If one of us sees an idea that they're doing, it's carte blanche to go and take that idea and make it your own because our lists are going to be different. And that's what I love about our little community. So yeah, yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.